Legacy, Stunning Growth. And today we have a special one for you, Jalil Okafor. This guy was highly touted coming out of high school. You see, he had Cal at the game, Derrick Rose at the game, Rick Patino. This guy had everybody coming to watch him. Everybody knew he was big time. And a lot of people still showing love today, wondering why he never got his shine. Well, I'm going to explain why his growth was stunning. Born December 15, 1995, this guy was a heavy recruit out of Chicago. I mean, he had the size, he had the skill, the footwork. You see him going up against Jabari Parker, dominating, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was, he was one of the best high school players ever in Chicago, and everybody know it, you know? He was highly recruited since before high school. He had been a top recruit for years. But something happened, man. Something happened. There was a reason why this guy is not one of the best players in the NBA right now. Now, as you can see, his footwork is amazing. His body control is amazing. Strong, young kid. And he's still young, even right now. So let's get into a little bit of why I think this guy's growth was stunning. So at the end of his high school career, he was named National Player of the Year by Parade, USA Today, and McDonald's, among others. This guy dominated in high school and he was everything that you could hope for. He decided to take his talents to Duke University in the ACC to play for Coach K, along with his friend Tyus Jones. Now, everyone was very excited for this, as he gets to go against some of the best competition in the nation. Being a top recruit out of high school isn't easy, but this guy did it, and he did it well. His first game at Duke, he had almost 20 points, 19 to be exact, and over 15 in the next four games. This guy was the real deal. He had footwork, he had handles, look at him up and under, fake, finish, he could shoot the ball. And for the season, he ended up averaging 17 points while shooting 50% from the field. Really good for a big man, and also averaging 8 rebounds per game. Now at 6'11", this guy was expected to do a lot in the tournament. And come tourney time, he didn't disappoint. Although in his last game against Kaminsky at Wisconsin, he had 10 points and was in foul trouble the whole game, which concerned some scouts. But it wasn't big enough to throw him out of the top 10 or lottery consideration. This guy played well, man, the whole season. In college, he was a typical college big man, a typical good college big man. But the concerns about him was he couldn't really defend. He moved his feet well, had good footwork, but he wasn't one of those athletic, long big men that would get above the rim and dominate you on defense, you know which wasn't really a big deal since his offense was so refined. Coming out of high school and college, he was such a highly touted prospect. Now this could be a gift and a curse for prospects. I always say, once you have that name in high school, that could take you on a fast path straight to the NBA. This was the case for Jalil Okafor. Now the 2015 NBA Draft Lottery began with three teams fighting for the number one spot. 76ers, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and the Los Angeles Lakers. And this is the beginning of the stunt. The 76ers only had a 15% chance of getting the number one pick. And so happens, they ended up with the number three pick in the draft. Now the Lakers would go on to end up having the number two pick in the draft. And the Timberwolves would have the number one pick in the draft. This year, you had some big names. You had Carl Anthony Towns, you had D'Angelo Russell, you had Jaleel Okafor, all fighting for that number one spot. But as we would see, the Timberwolves would not draft Jaleel Okafor. If so, man, I think his career would have taken a positive turn. And I think he could have helped Minnesota even in a more efficient, more effective way than Carl Anthony Towns did. Not to say that Towns was bad, but I think Jaleel Okafor was still the better player. I don't know somewhere his confidence just took a really big hit. So draft night rolls around, Sixers are sitting at number three, Knicks are sitting at number four, which also would have been a 
a very good situation for him to team up with Carmelo, not have to be the star in a big city. That would have been a good situation for him as well. Now, at number two, the Lakers, that would have been a good situation. A lot of pressure for big men coming into the Lakers, but I think that would have still been better than Philly. The Lakers had a clear need for a big man at the time. Roy Hibbert, who was on the decline of his career, Robert Sacre, these guys were both at the center position for the Lakers. And I think Jaleel could have really helped Kobe Bryant down in LA. Now the Sixers, led by GM Sam Hinkie, had did something that I think could be detrimental to any player's career. When you draft at the same position on top of each other, all these highly touted prospects, that could really affect someone's confidence. And this is what happened to Jaleel Okafor. Two years before, they had already drafted Embiid. The year after, they drafted Noel. There was clearly no space for this guy Okafor there. But the 76ers still took him with the third pick in the draft. And you could see in his face he wasn't too excited about going to Philly. But hey, you're getting drafted into the NBA. What can you do? You kiss your mom, you hug your friends, and you go and play. They could have easily taken Emmanuel Moutier right there. They needed a point guard. He was a highly touted prospect coming out of high school and overseas. He was long, athletic, and we didn't know he was going to be what he turned out to be. But who knows, his career could have taken a different path had he been drafted by a team like Philly. They could have also taken Kristaps Porzingis. Now, in hindsight, it's 2020. Now know that that guy is amazing, but Jaleel Okafor wasn't that bad either. He started his rookie season very well actually. 26.7 rebounds, 2 blocks, he had a few pretty good games, posting his first double-double against the Bulls on November 9th. The Sixers still managed to get off to the 0-16 start, the worst start in NBA history. All because of that fateful decision by Philadelphia to draft Jaleel number 3 in 2015. This is the first reason his growth was stunning. Along with some injuries that plagued his rookie season, he still averaged 17 points per game, along with 7 rebounds per game, while shooting 50% from the field. And then, this happened. <laughs> Which would be the second reason Jaleel would see his growth stunted. On December 2nd, the team decided to suspend Jaleel for two games. Upon his return, he still managed to return back to form making the All-Star Weekend's Rising Star Challenge. Injuries plagued him after that, and his season was cut short to only 53 games. The next year, Jaleel Okafor would see his time diminish even more, playing behind veteran Amir Johnson, who was brought in on a one-year, $11 million contract. Now, Coach Brett Brown at the time was a defensive-minded coach, and Amir was a very good defender better than Jaleel. So Jaleel didn't see the court very much that year. This led to an outcry by fans and even other players donning free jaw shirts, wanting to see the once highly touted prospect get a chance to shine like they think he should have. On December 17, 2017, Okafor was traded along with Nick Stauskas and a 2019 second round draft pick to the Brooklyn Nets in exchange for Trevor Booker. In his debut for the Nets on December 15, 2017, his 22nd birthday, Okafor had 10 points and four rebounds in 23 minutes. Hopefully Jaleel can bounce back and be the player that everyone thought he would be coming out of high school. We all wanna see these players do good and it sucks to have your growth stunted by something that you absolutely can't control. But in my opinion, I think this guy could have been one of the best big men of his generation. He had the tools, he had the footwork, he had the drive, he had the opportunity. Now let's see if he has the character. He's still only 22 years old and it's still a long journey for him. So hopefully he turns it around. This has been JC with Stunted Growth.